We begin this mystery with another mystery, we are going to look at the basilisk. In the libraries of Khazar Dun, there is a book that details the event of rebels being thrown into prison. Let's read the book. The Prison Isle. Most of the rebellious dwarves who betrayed us and allied themselves with the Cyclops and some dishonorable human knights were prosecuted and thrown in jail on the Prison Isle Wukatra. They now have to live or fight the captured minotaurs, orcs, and cyclops they seem to like that much. Justice is served. One thing that stands out here is that the book mentions humans, yet we find no humans in Wakatra. Instead, we find a camp with four trolls. And beneath the troll camp, we can find the basilisk. Could there be a connection? The book mentions rebels, so let's look into what they are up to. Malik stands guard by the city mines. When poked for information, he shares quite a lot about the rebels. The renegades lack the strength, number and organization to do anything but harass our troops and hinder the retaking of the mines. They desperately try to get some secret weapon to capture Kazadun somehow. Without the manpower for an all-out assault, they are looking for other means of conquest. Another mushroom blight might be just what they need to weaken our protection. But they are certainly investigating other means. They would probably ally themselves with the lost if the latter could be reasoned with. I guess even the renegades are smart enough to see what becomes of those who become thralls of the vile masters of the lost. The ones that we capture are often drunk but starve and still insist their buddy will avenge them with some kind of secret weapon. Our greatest fear that the dreaded basilisk has found a way from his caves might have come true. There are rumors about strange eggs that can be found in the caves. I really doubt that they are basilisk eggs, but the rumor persists. If you come across some strange egg at some remote place, better be safe than sorry and destroy it. Now we've got a basic understanding of what the renegades are and what's going down in the mines beneath. But what is this secret weapon they are talking about? In the mines we find a drunk, renegade dwarf with bad eyesight. Due to his conditions he mistakes us for a renegade. Asking him about the secret weapon gives us important details. There is one thing that the imperialists have always feared. The basilisk. If we could get the beast to attack Kizadun or even better, gain control over it. We could destroy the enemy forces once and for all. With the Basilisk at our disposal, soon we would rule Khazadun. In the worst case it would at least wreak havoc amongst our enemies. We can certainly contain it again later on, somehow. Our best geomancers are working on a plan right now, I tell you. You know those tiny runes that allow some magic users to become the master of a creature. Now imagine, all what it takes to enslave the basilisk is probably some jibber rune and more spellcasters. Soon, our days of dirt and hunger are over and we will rule over Khazadun as we should. Now we know what the renegades are out for, the basilisk. Their plan is to take control over the basilisk using runes and magic. With the basilisk in their hands, they could rule Khazadun. I'm going to show you the last clue we can find in the city mines. Remember how the captured renegades are drunk and still insist that their buddy will avenge them with a secret weapon? I don't think that their buddy is a dwarf, the book on Wakatra mentions that the renegades have teamed up with cyclopses and humans. We will look at something odd going on in this cave. There are two humans and seven dwarves. While it's obvious that this is a reference to Snow White, it plays a role in the lore too. This is also not the first time we see witches in Khazar Dun. In the book we find out that this witch has started an apple mailing service. As the renegade dwarves live in constant fear of the basilisk and always drunk, it's not impossible to think that an apple falls out once in a while and some drunken dwarf mistakes this red, round thing for a basilisk egg. In Tibia there are very few trees that can be opened, one of them is in Femur Hills just north of Khazar Dun. In it we find trails of the apple mailing service. We also find two more of these trees in Tibia, one is near the Witch Wida by the giant spider. Another one is in Outlaw Camp. Could there be a connection? Now we could question where the prisoners went. We found no humans in Wakatra, instead we found trolls. The food shoot looks very suspicious because, most, not all of the prisoners were jailed. It implies that there are renegade dwarves amongst the imperialists within the city, and I think they helped the prisoners escape. They were looking for the basilisk, and they are looking for ways to control it via magic and runes. When we go to Demona, we find a basket and some snakes and a note the trees, play a flute to master the snakes. Could it be connected? The renegades wants to master the snakes. 
it's when we look at the inconspicuous that this starts to connect. A basket is very rare in tibia and can only be found in two other places. One is in White's hut inside a drawer. Another one is in the outlaw camp. The same places we found the hollow trees used for smuggling. Further down the cave we find a odd arrangement of creatures and an even odder shield. It looks like our gang from the prison got here. Now we have to look elsewhere for details. The renegades were interested in rune magic and spells. There is another place we can learn about these things, in the Plains of Havoc, from the Nightmare Knights. We'll first look at a couple of books from their old fortress. The first one is before a war quite some time ago, when the pits of Inferno happen. The time of war is at hand. At last we will face Goshna, the evil one. The man that was formerly known as my brother Falnus betrayed our order, humanity and the gods. We will punish him and his unholy allies. Now there is no trunning back. We will fight and there is just death or victory. Surrender or truce is no option. Even if the seven are on his side we will win at last and may it cost the lives of all of us. The next book is more recent and depicts the time after the war on Goshner. It is certain now. We are doomed. I have not the heart to tell it our remaining brothers and sisters, but the dreams were clear as seldom before. Our order will be wiped out by the hand of time soon, but at least there is also some hope. The same dream that told us about our doom hold a promise. In Tibia's darkest hour our order will return and once again battle the forces of evil, and a new generation will lead our order to greater glory than ever. May those who will come not fall prey to the same evil as we did. Now before we read the last book, we need to look at the Dark Cathedral. By the Dark Cathedral is the monk Lorbas, he tries to keep us out of the cathedral by telling us lies when inside we can read what they actually are up to. When we previously read about the Nightmare Knights War, they were fighting the necromancers of the Brotherhood of Bones. While that was going on, the people at the cathedral were seemingly planting moles. The attempt to place a mole in the Brotherhood of Bones has not been successful yet. The major problem is that the Brotherhood usually contacts promising candidates itself and not the other way around. The only success in arousing their interest led to the elimination of our hired necromancer by some local heroes. Seemingly the Brotherhood stole the corpse later and reanimated it. I hope they did nothing with his spirit, else unwanted information might have leaked to them. The TBI knows about our mole. It is quite certain that some recent actions and disinformation was only to bait him. He is now in some hiding place, and I'm afraid he will not be of much use for us in spying on the TBI's activities for a while. So we find two books about their different moles being discovered, yet we find no such book about the Nightmare Knights. However, we find a book that talks of successful indoctrination. The plans are making good process. The method of indoctrination and disinformation is very successful. Each week we can send out new students to further our course. Caution is still needed of course. Our enemies are numerous and powerful. Should they ever learn about our plans in this facility, the whole project would be endangered. It is far too early to go public with our plans. Therefore I suggest to build a second base at some remote place. It is important that we have an emergency backup, regardless of the resources it would take. So now we've gotten a pretty clear picture of what's going on in the Plains of Havoc. The people over a dark cathedral were sending moles, while the Nightmare Knights were fighting the Brotherhood of Bones. Now we have the background needed to tackle this mystery and the Nightmare Knights entrance test, the Dream Challenge. The Dream Challenge is a series of tests that the Nightmare Knights created to weed out bad recruits. It has a true ending and a fake ending, this is important later. We are interested in the latest happening there, which we get a clue of from this book. Send Alma with the new recruits to the Dream Master. If they can pass the test they are worthy to become Nightmare Knights. I don't think the Dream Challenge is too difficult. We must keep our standards even in these times of despair in which our enemies are numerous and our ranks are thinned out. We. This book is recent, when the last Nightmare Knights perished. When we tackle the dream challenge we stumble upon a dead adventurer who is trying to trick Hugo, the demon bunny that is trapped here. I am doomed. I know that Hugo lurks somewhere in the bushes in the north. I won't survive his deadly breath which would kill even the mightiest warrior. I have no clue how to trick the infamous Hugo, but there has to be a way. Perhaps alchemy is the key to success. I will mix these two potions I bought from the traveling wharf. We'll see what is going to happen. I find it very interesting that we find the author's body before Hugo, it's like the adventurer mixed the potions and died. Perhaps in an explosion? And why is a dwarf traveling with these kinds of potions? 
I previously mentioned that the dream challenge has a true and a fake ending, this is to weed out bad recruits. When we enter the sleeping chambers, we enter the fake ending of this place. The true ending, unbeknownst to the recruits, is accessed by solving the tic-tac puzzle with a hint from this book. It's only then that a student becomes a nightmare knight. However, many of the new recruits never found their way into the true ending, and we can read about them all in this chamber that is packed with riddles. Inside each chest we find various items and books that belong to the person that slept there. The bed in the center was occupied by the dream master, around it we find similar items that the dream master have along with the book on reaching the true ending. Looking at other books here, we find three identical books, a study of magic. We see the transplanter semimatter is polymorph and the time constant is a contradiction in cases of subliminal mana focusing of the first grade. This is no surprise to even the most simple-minded rune user but the real implication of this is. This book can be found in three chests, and it seems to be study material for magic. And it seems as if they are novices looking at something regarding rune magic. In this same chest we find a book of an aspiring sorceress. I wonder how our honor is doing. I miss him. But it's my duty as sorceress of the Nightmare Knights to protect our bases here far away from home. Soon I will visit him, and we will be reunited again. If all works like planned our marriage will take place in the end of this year. I hope this bitch Chandra will be kept busy by her studies in the Mage Guild and does not try to use my absence for one of her dirty tricks. She does not deserve a man like Ronner. This girl was afraid that a certain Chandra would take Ronner from him. Chandra was apparently studying at the Mage Guild. And interestingly enough we find a noble girl named Sandra in the Mage Guild and she seems quite snobby, fitting the description of Chandra. In the bed to the right we find a book that seems to belong to a dwarf and a person that is tired of the dwarf's snoring. Baina bless me with deafness. This snoring dwarf is driving me nuts. Will this ever stop? One day, I will kill either him or myself. I can't believe the others can sleep, dream training or not. I wonder if I would become deaf by putting my head in a cauldron and using an explosion room. Then again, I should perhaps put him in a cauldron and use some explosions. I am sure he will lure a dragon here that thinks this awful noise is a mating call. Tomorrow, I will try to get an assignment at Night Watch Tower. Even that windy hole is better than this. We find another mention of explosions, could this be the same people that sold explosions to the adventurer? And why is there so many mentions of cauldrons? I have a sneaking suspicion that this could be a witch and renegade dwarves. It even looks as if the supposed witch has been taking a peek into the Dream Master's book that writes about necromancers carrying special runes. And we know that the renegades were looking for ways to control the basilisk using rune magic. In the remaining two beds we find books on runes, and the guy on the left has a book on how to seduce women. Step one is by becoming a bard. The guy on the right seems to have money trouble with a person going by the name D. What's interesting here is that the name Telmer is strikingly similar to Almer who was sent to the dream challenge with the new recruits. There are many examples in Tibia where two siblings share similar name such as Lloyd and Boyd. So this tells us that it's likely two brothers, Almer and Telmer in these two beds. Who is D? Seeing as we find gold under Telmer's chest it seems like he has taken a loan of cash and in Benner we find the owner of Benner Bank, who goes by the name, Dagomer. It also seems like Almer has taken a liking to the sorceress. Judging by the fishbones it looks as if they have gone fishing together, they might have been sparring together judging by the staves, and maybe the girl even got a red rose. It seems like Almer is trying to seduce the girl. It looks as if Almer might have gotten the red rose at the Isle of Mists, this would make sense seeing as the sinister monks of Dark Cathedral were sending students to the Nightmare Knights. Almer and Telmer seems to have bad intentions in mind implied by the cash loan, and that the Isle is only accessible by druids, such as monks. Now we need to look at what happened to the last Nightmare Knights and the new recruits. In a hole south of the temple, we find recounts of Camdrek, a Nightmare Knight. Cambrek sealed Goshner's grave and hopes that Tasserer will not waste their last forces on an attack on the Ruthless Seven. Interestingly there is a Talon here as well. In the Chamber of Dreams we find Tasserer's dead body. He wasted many of their last forces on an attack on the Ruthless Seven. Before dying, he gave the key to a remaining survivor. The key can be found with Krenderak, who tried to discover the secrets of his ancestors. This is where the timeline ends, where the last recruits went, and where we find the remaining clues. In this cave we find lots of random items and dead bodies, though the items of note here is the sparring staff, banana skins and fishbones we find here. These are the same items that Almer and the girl were carrying. 
that looks as if they have been keeping together during this whole ordeal. We also find another talon, and even further to the south, is a secret area behind stalagmites. If two people cooperate, one can get past the stalagmites. In here, it looks like they have left some of their belongings. Almer was trying to become a bard, and likely left his lyre here. We also know that they have ties to Venner due to the debt with Dagomer. We can only buy red bags from Venner. The third talon can be found by Hengis Wolfson. Hengis was a nightmare knight who got trapped by Cyclopses, and whose crystal key was stolen by a bone lord. We have now found three talons in Plains of Havoc, each talon belonging to a nightmare knight. So why do we find a talon in Jakundif Desert? I think they went here after nearly being mauled in Plains of Havoc by the dragons. Almer was sent with the new recruits, so it's very likely that Almer already was a nightmare knight, and that this talon is Almer's. Where did they end up? Let's take a look at the Triangle Tower. In the basement we find a Bone Lord. Up a couple of floors we find these strange carvings that are used for teleportations through the Dream Realm. On the top floor we find what we have been chasing. A witch. A monk. A renegade dwarf. We get a garlic necklace from this quest similar to what we found in Almer's red bag. This has to be the guys we saw over in the fake ending of the Dream Challenge. But what happened to the girl? This sinister group took this noble girl and supposedly tried to do some ancient ritual involving the blood of a royal girl. We find her, guarded by some of their other bone lords. The famous Jakund of Banshee. It is not known how to get to her and pull the lever, but we can deduce that it's related to an unsolved quest in Tibia. We even found renegade dwarves on the way here. It is currently known how to remove the bars by pulling a lever in the Jakundif dungeon, but not how to remove the magic force fields nor how to open a bridge there. A final nudge on this theory is that the Nightmare Knights knew how to summon dragons, which we find here.